Well, welcome to 2023. <laughs> I was going to correct you there and say no, it's 2022. <laughs> Obviously, my head, it's 12 hours into 2023 and I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet. That's pretty obvious. Yeah, so welcome to 2023. <laughs> now, um, because um, we're just maintaining Salty Last, there's not very much content um, as far as projects are concerned. So just remember that this content is driven by you. So if you have any questions, then do put them in the comments below. We have got a question from one of our viewers to start, haven't we, Beverly? We have indeed. Uh, but first, we've actually got to move Salty Lass from the, this slip uh, just at the bottom of the ramp, which was really useful for our uh, landlubber friends. Yeah, we had some landlubbers aboard for Christmas, and um, they, you know, it's easier for them to get off here and just walk up the ramp. So now we're going to move Salty Lass over there to the normal slip that you see us in Wimmer and Bangor, and we'll be there for the rest of our stay. Yep. So uh, we're going to get on with that and um, just remember to put comments and questions down below. It's calm as milk, let's take, some, let's take the spring off. So you're going to let the bar go and I'm going to put the stern in and then we're just going to drop the rope under the pontoon. Yeah. Forward revs. Half rudder. Nope, we just hit something. It's just the stern just banged in. Okay. Better go backwards for a touch. There was a very light wind from our port side, but what we had failed to appreciate was that it would be enough to pin us to the pontoon. Yeah. No, it's not working. No, no, don't, 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 don't. We're just getting pushed toward this thing on the inside. Let me get the uh, stern over. along the pontoon now. Our fender's up on the... Uh... Right, she's in neutral. I'll get off and walk her back. You go under the hill. Oh, no. Got nothing to walk her back with though. See you in a minute, uh, Ian. Ian? Alright, I'll give it a line forward. I know, but I've now got a line back. Yeah, well, I'm off the hook. That's the easier to do this one, won't it? Okay. Let's get that fender into the hook. Okay, let's. She's in neutral. Yeah, I need it. Springer gainer. We are gonna have to spring her, but he can he can spring her. Yeah, no, I'm your springer with the engine. Oh, okay, fair enough. We'll do an engine spring. I'm with you. Throw it over you. Okay, so you know what you're doing. You're gonna go backwards. Yeah. We're gonna take the spring on the engine. I don't think we need it, but I think we do. I know. You just you do the helm. He's gonna include. Yeah. I'm holding it just for. Okay, yeah, let's unloop it. Quick, quick. It wouldn't be a bad idea, thanks. Thanks, Ian. Well, that was clearly what we needed to do. Yeah, but that's why I've been practicing things before. It is, isn't it? I don't need to take us all the way down, though, do I? I just need to take us down enough so that I'm ready. Right.
autopilot in the marina. <laughs> right. I'm just letting her get ready. Alright, I'm going to start uh, slowing down. Reversing. Supposed to bring us to a halt. Fine power. Well, um, one of our viewers uh, has asked us about condensation and how do we keep it down? Now, first thing you need to know is where does all that water come from? And of course, one of the sources is doing the washing up. Just a simple activity, but um, you know, you've got water sloshing around, so you're creating water vapour. So the only thing we can do really to reduce the water here is, as soon as we've done the washing up, get rid of the water. Don't let it lie in the sink. Um, another source, of course, is <laughs> when you come in and you come in wet. So, <laughs> if you're lucky, go somewhere nice and warm. <laughs> Your condensation will be a lot less. But for Sir Beverly and I, <laughs> yeah, we come in wet. Uh, one of the ways we keep moisture down is we have a dehumidifier, which we keep under the table and we keep it strapped to the legs. Uh, we did try the little dehumidifier balls that you can buy and they suck out a bit of moisture over a period of months. They're fine in areas where you don't get a lot of moisture, but on days like this, where it's very wet outside and you're coming in wet, well, it looks like this. I don't know if it's particularly visible, but that is what we get on a very wet afternoon. And really those little balls can't compete with it. So a dehumidifier sucks this out of the boat and it just keeps the moisture down. It is the best way we have found to combat condensation on the boat. Well, cooking is another source of moisture on a boat. I know that doesn't seem um, like it makes any sense, but butane or propane, if you use that for cooking, um, as they combust, they combine with oxygen from the air. These are hydrocarbons. So the result of their combustion is carbon dioxide and water vapor. And just cooking with this, particularly with butane, which is worse than propane in this respect, you will get water created, which will stay in the boat. Um, you also get carbon dioxide, which is why they always say that when you're cooking on a boat, always make sure you have the hatch open or a window open or something like that. But this is a source of water. Um, the primary way of keeping your moisture down is to get it off the boat as quickly as possible. Oddly enough, another source of moisture is food. Um, I mean, the amount of water they put in bacon these days is criminal, but if you cook bacon or mushrooms, anybody who cooks knows that you get liquid that comes out of them and in a hot pan, it evaporates and fills the boat. Um, teas and coffees, kettles, steam comes out of kettles. But, as just a little aside, to save energy these days, we have actually marked on the side of our kettle 
where the tea and coffee is so we know how much our coffee pot needs and we know how much our teapot needs so we only boil the exact amount of water we need which also has the effect that the kettle's not boiling for ages and ages and putting more moisture into the boat. You've got to get a bit fanatical about all this. You've got to become a bit of a moisture nut job. You know, where is there a source of moisture? How can I cut it down? What can I do to get rid of it? Because if you're spending time on a boat in cold conditions, it all mounts up and you really do need that dehumidifier to get rid of it. Well, as you can see, uh, the dinghy <laughs> it's a bit soft, it's still here. Um, although it was October when we were looking at that last, we still haven't got round to it because we just had so many other things to do. But we've put it where we've put it to keep on top of the windows, the hatches. Because one of the things about this type of boat is all the window frames are made of aluminium and they run from the outside of the boat to the inside of the boat where they're also aluminium. The problem is that when it gets cold out here, it chills the frame and that conducts the cold to the inside of the boat and then any moisture in the boat condenses on the aluminium frames and drips on you. So it doesn't matter how waterproof the windows are, it's not a case of waterproofness, they're generating water from condensation in your breath. So by putting the dinghy over the top, it provides a layer of insulation. And also, if you look underneath at the hatches, you will see, like this hatch here, that we have acrylic canvas on them, because that just keeps them warm enough to stop those drips forming. But unfortunately, there's no way to attach acrylic canvas to the side windows on the coach house. So down here we've come up with a rather novel solution. We've got some bubble wrap from Tesco's which covers the aluminium frames and it stops them chilling just enough to reduce the moisture. You never ever get it completely right. There will always be some, but it does help us. And surprisingly, it survives the gales. I was astounded. I thought the first windy day it would be gone. I'd never see it again. But no, it's still here and it has made a, quite a difference to the amount of moisture we're getting inside. Reduced, not gone. One of the things that we did very early on uh, was put camper van um, insulation on the side of the boat. Now that has really, really helped, um, you know, keep Salty Lass warm. But also uh, this was an area where condensation would form just because it's really cold out there. But with the insulation, it's just not so bad. It doesn't get rid of all of it, don't get me wrong, but it really does reduce it. Um, but we've also got, I use them for storage, but these are these bags are actually um, for freezers. So again, it's not very much insulation, but it's a layer of insulation. And then up the stuff that we store under here is, um, you know, kept dry um, but we can just remove them and um, obviously if I want a bigger bed I've got that. But the other thing that we've got as you can see here is dry mat. Now we've got that underneath the bed, uh, we've got that on anywhere where we've got fabric on the side because what we found was when we had the fabric right up to the side of the boat it just got soaked. Um, so having the dry mat that just keeps the circulation going and that's what you really need on a boat is circulation which is why even though I hate it all our cupboards are open because the one thing that does happen is um, you know you get mould in there as soon as you start closing them up and you shut that circulation down they just get mouldy and they just start growing mould. So every day we open our cupboards. We might close them later, but at some point or other they get opened a day.